For the following exercises, use the functions f of x is equal to negative 0.1x plus 200 and g of x is equal to 20x plus 0.1. Find the point of intersection of the lines f and g. All right, so first of all, I'm sure by now you know how I feel about these two particular notations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just set them both equal to y. All right, and I know that I can do that, especially in this case too, because these two lines will intersect at some point, all right? Uh, they have, they do, they have non-identical slopes, and therefore they're going to intersect at some particular point in time. Where is it going to be? That might be hard to tell in the beginning, but I know one of them has a positive slope, the other one has a negative slope of some sort. They're going to intersect somewhere, okay? Now, that being the case, I know that the coordinates. I should have went back actually. Let me see if I can. Oh, okay. I know then at some point here, this point will be in common between the two lines. In other words, this point will have a common x and a common y. Or in other words, they both will have the same x and the same y. So that being the case, I know now what I can do is simply going to be to call each of these functions now or plug in essentially a y for both of them. y is equal to negative 0.1x plus 200. y is equal to 20x plus 0 0.1. Okay, so now that I have these two equations and they're telling me to find the point of intersection, we've done, by the way, check out the playlist, all right, um, uh, on our channel. This will be in the linear function playlist or graphs of the linear function playlist. Um, the couple videos prior went through a lot of detail on this. So what I can now do is uh, essentially I'm going to set these two equal to one another. In other words, since I know this y is equal to this y, then what that means is that this part of the equation must also equal this part of that equation. So how do I write that out? Well, I'm going to write this 0.1x, negative 0.1x plus 200, must equal then 20x plus 0.1. Notice I have now one unknown, so I can easily solve for that. So let's bring the x on over to the left-hand side. Great, what would that be? Well, that would be a negative 20.1x. And why don't we bring then the 200, we'll subtract that on over in the same step, basically, on over to the right-hand side. So that would have canceled, that would have canceled, right? So we're basically then adding up this part, which we did already, and we're gonna be adding up this part, and know it's essentially a subtraction there. So this would be then a negative 100, 199.9. All right, and now we're going to divide both sides then by negative 20.1, negative 20.1, and what is x going to equal? Well, let's take out that calculator. So negative 199.9 divided by negative 20.1, and we get about, I'm going to round this to two decimal places, I guess, so about 9.9, .9, now the 5 will round the 4 up, so 9.95, all right? So that's the x. Now remember, whenever we know the x, I'll clean this up a little bit, whenever we know the x, we can easily solve for the y by simply taking this x value that we found and plugging it in for x in either equation. It doesn't really matter which one we do, okay? They're gonna come out identical. So why don't I choose the second equation? So y is equal to 20x plus 0.1. Plug in now that x value, so 9.95, plus then 0 0.1. And probably when I do this calculation, I'm gonna use the exact value that I found in the calculator, which is about 9.9452736632. Alrighty. And just take that then and multiply it by 20 and add 0.1 to it. And it's gonna come out to be, oh, very, 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 very close to 199. Okay. And voila, these are the two points. So we get the coordinates are gonna be about 9.95 comma 199. That's where these two lines would intersect. Cool. So if I now had to draw, let's, okay, so let's take a look at the second part. It says, where is f of x greater than g of x? Where is g of x greater than f of x? All right. So in this particular case, it might not be a bad idea to try to draw a little picture. Okay. So we know that the point of intersection, I'll try to draw this a little bit to scale, but we know the point of intersection here is going to be about the x value is 10, the y value is about 200. You know, so let's, let's say here's 10. I mean, the y value would be all the way on up here somewhere, right? So this might be a little hard to do to scale. 
but I'm going to try to do my best. So let's say 10 is here. All right. And let me extend this line on up a little bit. So let's just say the point is right about there in terms of the intersection. And maybe what I'll do is I'll just bring this down a little bit. All right. So uh, let me sketch the two graphs. Okay. I know that uh, what I'll do is I'll actually, let me see. What I'm going to do here is highlight this one in red. Okay. Highlight this in red here. So I'm going to plot that as a red graph. So I know that the, um, I know the Y intercept there is about 200, which is very close to here, right? It'd be a little bit above that point because that had a Y value of 199. And I know that the slope is going to be a negative uh, 0.1. So that particular line there will look something, 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 something like this, maybe. Well, why did that do that? All right, something like this, ish. Okay. Now let me uh, do this. Let me erase that uh, highlight and let me put that one maybe in, let's see, let's get a little, let's get a little happy blue, a little happy blue there. All right. So now I'm going to graph that one. And I realize that the y-intercept is very close to zero, basically, right? Point 0.1, which is all the way on down here on the graph. Okay. And I know, though, that the slope here is very, very steep. By the way, I know it's positive and it's 20. So it's a very steep slope, very steep positive slope. I should have explained that too. And this is also a negative slope here on the red. So I knew it was going down and it's pretty shallow because it's only point 0.1. So I know this particular line will look something something like this. I'll probably have to angle it myself a little bit. Okay. Uh, let me angle it a little more. Let's see if I can get this to match up. Yeah, there we go. It'll look something, something like this ish. Okay. That's what the two lines would look like. So now what are your thoughts? How can we now figure this part out? It says, where is F of X? Now F of X was the red one. Okay. F of X. And here is G of X, G of X. Okay. So it says, where, of, where is F of X greater than G of X? So F of X will be greater than, what does it mean to be greater than, by the way? It means when is this value going to be greater than this value? Okay. So where is the Y value of F of X greater than the Y value of G of X? Well, think about this. It's basically related to the heights. Could we agree that I'm going to draw a little horizontal line here. I'm going to try to dash it. Okay. Pretend that's a perfectly horizontal line, even though it doesn't really look perfectly horizontal. Could we agree that any point to the left of that, of the point of intersection, could we agree that the Y value of the red line is greater than the Y value of the blue line? Watch, for example, pretend I chose this particular point here, uh, right here. Okay. That Whatever Y value that is, it would obviously be greater than 200. It might be 201, 202, 20, whatever. But we know that this, that Y value is 200 or 201, let's just say. And the other, the other Y value for the blue graph in the corresponding X spot, meaning along, you know, it's along the same X coordinate, would be somewhere like all the way down here. This would be like negative. I don't, I'm, I don't even 80. I'm making it up. But doesn't that make sense that? Basically, to the left of this particular point, or in other words, right, if I know that this particular point where they intersect is, remember, we know that point, is 9.99 comma 199. I know that any point then to the left of this is going to uh, correlate with a f of x value being larger than the g of x. Okay, remember, f of x is essentially the y here, and the g of x is essentially the y there. So what does it mean to be to the left of this point? Well, remember horizontal, right? Uh, movements are basically related to X coordinates. So in other words, when I can write it out, right? When, when X is then less than 9.99, excuse me, 9.95. Why did I write 9.99? That's 9.95. Now I'm just seeing if you're paying attention. So this is 9.95. Okay, when X is less than 9.95, so remember that would be just to the left of that point and any point to the left, right? Because it's less than 9.95. So 
So when x is less than 9.95, f then of x is greater than g of x, meaning the y value of this equation is greater than the y value of that equation. Now, what are your thoughts then about answering the second question? Meaning where is g of x then greater than f of x? What do you think? Good. Excellent. I heard you. It was totally right. So answering the second question then would be when x then is greater than 9.95, then g of x, meaning the y value of the blue graph now, is going to be above the y value of the red graph. So the g of x is then larger than f of x. Okay. And you might say, well, why aren't you putting like greater than or less than or, e uh, uh, excuse me, less than or equal to here or greater than or equal to? Well, because I know where they're equal, one's not greater than the other. Is five greater than five? Well, no, no, they're equal. 2,000 greater than 2,000? Or less than 2,000? No, they're equal. So I can't really put that in, right? It has to be less than or greater than. But hopefully that makes visual sense, okay? So some concepts in here, in, in terms of math, you definitely want to know the algebra, but you definitely want to have good visuals um, in order to conceptualize this, because a question like this might sound inextricably hard if you don't have a graph or you don't have a picture of it. And then once you kind of see it, it's like, oh, wait, that's not bad. That's, that's math. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Remember, check out our playlist. We've got a, tons of thousands of problems out there to help you out with your class. And um, yeah, I look forward to helping you with more problems. If you can, subscribe and like, and maybe even tell your friends. We appreciate it. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.